my help come from. Hallelujah. Bless your day, God. For the Lord is my shield and my fortress. I fear no one. Come on, we welcome him in. Hey, let's say it with me. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory. Let the King of glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of glory in. Come on, we invite him in. He dwells in our praises. And he inhabits our worship.
him the highest praise. He inhabits the praises of Hallelujah. honor you. You are the most important thing to us. You are worth everything. You are worth everything. We've come to worship you. We've come to pour out our most expensive oil on you. And we surrender to you. You're worthy of our surrender. Our hearts, our minds, our souls, you're worthy for us to give you everything. Satisfy us. I hunger and thirst with arms stretched wide. I know you.
surrender all, all to Jesus, all to Jesus, all to Jesus, we surrender. So I surrender, I surrender, I want to know you more, I have to know you more, I surrender, I surrender all to Jesus, I surrender. All to Jesus, I surrender. I surrender. I want to know. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. That's our heart's desire. It's to know you, it's to be one with you, God. Hallelujah.
on the throne of my heart. Be seated on my heart. Be seated on my heart. Invite him into that place. Invite him into that tender place. Invite him into that place where you have fear. Invite him into that place where you have anxiety. Invite him into that place where there's competition. Invite him into that place of comparison. Let him have it. Let him have that. Let him have it. Let him have it. We put it on the altar again. We put ourselves on the altar again. We put ourselves on the altar again. There's something that has to die. And we choose to die again. We choose to die again. We choose to lay down our ego, our ambition, all of our greed. We lay it down. We lay it down. The altar is open. If there's something that you have to crucify, if there's something that needs to be burned up, if there's something that needs to die, if there's something that needs to die, be seated on the throne of my heart, on the throne. Be seated on the throne of my heart. Control the false security because we need more, we all need more. You all need more, we all need more, we all need more, we all need more grace and mercy. If you're in need of grace today, if you're in need of mercy. The altar is open. More, it's available. It's available. More is available. More is available. God, we need more. God, we need more. More, more. We pray for more. We pray for more.
lift your voices for more. It's available to you. Where you're empty, there's available. There's an available more. There's an available more. There's an available more. The well is open and the waters are troubled. 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 And the angels are ascending and descending. The angels are ascending and descending. The angels are ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. The angels are here. 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 Your grace is sufficient And you make all things new Behold, I do something new Behold, I do something new There's something new Break us for the things that break you Break us for the things that break you I want to be more like you I want to be more like you, hope. I want to be more. I want to be more. I want to be more. Where's the desperation for more? Where's the desperate? Where's the hungry? Where's the hungry? Where's the desperate? Where's the desperate? more. Lift your voice and cry out for more. This flesh cannot glory in your sight. And it cannot offer you anything but the one sacrifice that we are. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. You I won't reserve myself for nothing else But I surrender, I surrender, I surrender I break before you, I break before you, I break before you I'm willing to be broken I'm willing to be broken Where's the sound of the broken? I'm willing to be broken I'm willing to be broken. I'm willing to be broken. Where's the cry? I'm willing to be broken. I tried anything. I tried other things. I tried other things. But you never fail. You never fail. You never fail. You never fail. You accept me the way that I am. And your love chases me. Your love chases me. Your love chases me. Your love chases me. You don't see it. You don't see my flaws. But your love chases me. Your love chases me. Your love chases me you love you love you love you love you love chases me oh it's okay to cry out it's okay to say god i need more it's okay to say god i'm willing to be broken i'm willing to be naked 
before you I'll be naked at the altar I'll be naked at the altar I don't care who sees me cry I don't see I don't care who sees me weep I don't care who sees me broken I don't see who sees me bow I don't care who sees me bow I don't care who hears my holler I don't care who hears my groan I don't care who hears my travail I don't care cause I know my travail draws you to me it draws you to me it draws you to me it draws you to me my cry draws you to me my cry draws you to me my travail draws you to me come on come on get desperate come on come on come on come on this ain't the time to be embarrassed this ain't the time for condemnation his love chases you his love chases you his love chases you he chases despite the abortion he chases you despite the homosexuality he chases you despite the lying it still chases you despite the inconsistency it still chases you although you want to run and hide you can't hide no more 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 his light goes into the darkness his light goes into the darkness His light goes into the darkness. If you're in a dark place, I dare you to come to the light. I dare you to come to the light. 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 You're more than enough in the light. Come to the light. Come to the light. He sees it for the motherless. He sees you for the fatherless. He sees you for the motherless. He says, I see you for the fatherless. He says, I see you in this more. This more. You haven't seen your best days yet. You haven't seen the fullness of your destiny yet. There's more, 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 more. Come on, cry out. More, more. Come on, every hand lifted. Hallelujah to the King. Come on. We ask you for more. 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 Come on. Come on. Let your heart begin to cry out unto the Lord. We pray. Come on, release the sound. We pray for more. We pray for more. Oh, we pray for more. We pray for more. Come on, tell him. We pray for more. Make it personal. Say, I pray for more. We pray for more. Hallelujah. We pray for more. Say, I pray for more. I pray for more. Come on, 
from the depths of your belly come on from your spirit of glory that waves of glory begin to move that waves of glory begin to move glory that cannot be contained glory that cannot be contained glory that cannot be controlled glory that cannot be restrained glory that cannot be comprehended by the human mind we ask you, Father, for that glory. Come on. We ask you, Father, for that glory. Come on. We ask you, Father, for the glory. Yes. For the glory, for the glory, for the glory. For the glory, for the glory, for the glory, for the glory. For the glory, for the glory, for the glory, for the glory. For the glory, for the glory, for the glory, for the glory. For the glory, for the glory, for the glory, for the glory. For the glory, 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 for the glory. a song for the hungry this is a song for the hungry for the, for the seekers we're not just satisfied with the anointing we want the glory the glory and the anointing is two different things For the glory. Hallelujah. For the 
minutes come on pray in the spirit all over the room all over the room if you're filled with the spirit pray in your heavenly language come on let's release a sound one accord Come on. Ze pere vile ti ti de me hendo bon de le be ko pa ya zan de le de de pe la ba ta ta pa na ba han da ba ya ja ta de ke te de be le be ko pa ya come on ze be ndi a ta nda de de be ko pa ra ba la ba ha sha ta yes yes Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied with where I am right now. Make a commitment to go into deeper place. To seek you for deeper things. I want to know you. I want to know you in a deeper way. I want to know. I want to know you. Take us deeper. Take us deeper. Take us For the days of my years are written in your books, Lord. I can hide from thee, Lord. I'm 
Be 
thoughts. Lift your voice and thank God for his covering. Come on, thank God that he knows your name. Thank God that you can come naked and not ashamed. I don't hear the sound of gratitude. Come on, I said I don't hear the sound of gratitude. Come on, release the sound of gratitude. Into his gates, we come boldly. God, you see me. God, you see me. God, you see me. God, you know me. Because you see me, because you know me, nothing can be hidden from you. Nothing can be hidden from you. So because of that, we humbly enter into his presence. Because nothing can be hidden. None of us have the space to be puffed up, arrogant, Assuming we come humbly because he sees me. Jesus. If I could get some of you to really understand what I just said. He is so worthy of praise. So worthy. I was looking had a documentary the other day and there was a man describing Jesus he said he died he was dead for 11 hours 
prayers. And then God sent him back and it was almost like he was abruptly placed back in his body. Astounded the doctors. They didn't understand what had happened. But he began to describe Jesus and describe what it was like to be in his presence. And my heart began to long for something deeper, for something more. Something beyond the superficial. He began to describe the angel that greeted him. And as wide as his eyes could see, his wings expanded. He said, as far as I could see, the angel's wings expanded. He said, it was a light and a glory that I had never in my life seen in my English language. Can't even put it into words. Stories like that. bring us to the point of reality that one day we're going to get up out of this place. One day Jesus is going to come back and whether you believe that he's coming back to reign on the earth or you believe you're going in heaven whatever you believe he's coming back. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, blemishes or any such thing. Which is why this is the day we've got to be committed. Committed to serving God with our whole heart. We've got to be committed to laying it down. We've got to be committed. We've got to come out of the place of dating God come into full relationship with him we've got to pursue him like he pursued us when he found us we've got to pursue him like he pursued us I have a responsibility today I'm going to teach and preach best I know how but before we do that let us take communion amen just lift your hands. We're not going to do it in a normal way. Lift your hands. Lift up your communion. Just begin to worship God for what he did on the cross. For his blood that redeems us. For his blood that keeps us. For his blood that washes us. One day we're going to get up out of this place. But I'm so grateful that there has been a place prepared for me. That I'm not serving him in vain. It's not boring to serve God. It's not boring to live for God. It's actually exciting. Because I know this place is just the passageway. I'm just passing through. Do you all believe that? We've spent too much time investing in what's here. That we've missed that eternity is forever. Which is why I can't afford to hide anything from the Lord. I come to you naked and not ashamed because of the blood. Matthew 26, 26 through 28 says now as they were eating Jesus took the bread he blessed it and he break it I want to back up just a little bit and just to give a little bit of history just for those of you that may have never taken communion and Jesus had a fellowship with his disciples the ones that will be later apostles and he was sitting at the table with them and he began to break bread. But as they were discussing, he 
had a moment where he began to explain to them that one of them would betray him. He said, one of you will betray me. And they all looked and pondered at me. Not me, Lord. Not me, Lord. And then he says, you know, basically he told Judas to do what he was going to do quickly. But then he said, he began to talk to them as we lead up into this verse. And it says, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. What he was doing in this moment, I'm going to tell you when to break it. But what he was doing in this moment was he was entering into a divine fellowship. He was entering into a covenant with those that would continue this word. He was entering into a covenant, an, inter, a, an eternal covenant with those who would continue this word. And so the bread represented his body. And the wine that they were drinking at that time represented the blood. And Jesus said throughout the scriptures, you can read it through multiple communion scriptures, that as often as you do this, you remember me. If you do this in church, if you do this in your home, wherever you partake of communion, you are remembering him. And you're not just remembering that he died. You are also remembering that he rose with all power in his hand. You're also remembering that he went down into hell and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from your enemy. Brought him to an open shame. Rose on the third day just for you and me. He stayed around for a bit, but then he ascended to heaven and then he sat down. Somebody say sat down. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come on, this is the gospel. He is seated. And because of that, we are covered. Now, as you drink, as you eat and drink today, I want you to remember that this is an act of covenant. Not just with this church, but between you and God. It's an act of covenant. And it is also an exchange. When you eat the bread, you must know or remember that he was bruised for you. That he was beaten for you. And that by his stripes, hey, you are healed. And so if there is any sickness or disease in your body, when you break the bread and you eat it, you have the right to claim healing. My God, I'm talking to some people in here. Yes, when you drink the blood, you have the right to claim heal cleansing. You have the right to claim the washing. You have the right to redemption. You have been redeemed of your sins, amen. I want you to know that today, something miraculous is going to take place in your life. You're not just taking communion religiously. You're taking communion because you believe it. Say, I believe. That I am given access to miracles. That I have been given access to healing. That I have been given access, come on, to eternal life. When you eat the bread and drink the blood, I want you to expect something to break out in your life that has never happened before. Did you hear what I said? I want your expectation to rise in the room. Come on. In the name of Jesus, Father, we lift up the bread. We lift up the blood before you and we decree that you are Lord. And we say, Lord, let the bread, bread be blessed. Let the blood be blessed in the name of Jesus. We lift the bread up and we break it. We eat. We lift the blood up, we bless it, and we drink in the name of Jesus. 
Now for those of you that had expectation, I want you to begin to praise God. Come on, I want you to begin to praise him for what you expect to receive. Praise him for what you have received. Come on people, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on people, praise the Lord. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hey, we thank you, Jesus. Praise him, hey. Praise him, hey. Come on, praise him. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on. You didn't have to do it, but you did. I'm so glad you died and rose. Come on. Come on. It had been prophesied that if you kill this body in three days, it will be raised again. Aren't you grateful that God is a keeper of his word? There is absolutely nothing yeah, that God has ever said that has fallen to the ground. Everything that God has ever spoken, come on in, it has come to pass. Aren't you grateful? Aren't you grateful that you serve a God that is a keeper of his word? Somebody say thank God. Say thank God for the blood. Say thank you Jesus for the blood. Thank you Jesus for the blood. Thank you Jesus for every strife. Thank you Jesus for the blood you shed. Thank you Jesus for all the torment you bore on my behalf. That's why mental breakdown and all of those spirits that harass you are illegal. In the name of Jesus. Jesus for your torment. You can be healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, go one more time and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. There's a presence about to come in this room that will supersede the operation of witches and warlocks. It will supersede the operation of every word. It will not prosper. Come on. Lift your voice and praise him. Lift your voice and praise him. Hey, man, Come on, I said lift your voice and praise him. Yes. Yes. Shout yes. Yes. We thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that from this word, that you are about to preach through me. And hearts will turn, minds will be healed. And we'll commit to living the hidden life. Father, let the angels begin to move through the room now, move through the bathrooms, move on the grounds, move, Lord, in every home watching. In the name of Jesus, move, Lord. Yeah, let miracles begin to break out. In the name of Jesus, for the woman that's crying out about her blood sugar, we command it to align in Jesus' mighty name. For the woman that's crying out about her blood sugar, where the enemy had been trying to kill her, we command it to align in the name of Jesus Christ. We command the correct amount of insulin to be released into her blood naturally. To every person in this room dealing with diabetes, we command healing to come. To every child in this room dealing with di diabetes, we command it. You said every name must bow to the name of Jesus. We command diabetes to bow. 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 We release the name, hey, the name that is greater than any other name. Somebody shout Jesus. 
we release the name hey, that is greater than any other name. Somebody shout Jesus. We release the name hey, that is greater than any other name. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble. Sickness and disease bow. Now, at the name that can deliver say bow. At the name of Jesus, let him be a bit shot. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep praying for a moment. Somebody's healing. Somebody's deliverance is in the room. Somebody's deliverance is in the room. Yeah! You will not be on medication for the rest of your life. I curse the effects of pharmacia. I curse the negative effects in your body. It's shut up, the up. In your body, hey, I command it. I curse it. I curse. I curse the effects. I curse the effects. The negative effects on your body, on your thinking, on your mind, on your memory. In the name of Jesus. 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 The effects on your concentration. In the name of Jesus. The effects. The effects on your strength. The effects. In the Yes, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I curse the eye. Yeah, we plant land acts to the root, but everything that has traveled through the generations. Uh, yeah, diabetes that has come through the generations. Eating habits that have come through the generations. Uh, Father, we pray now. Discipline. Order. Hey, that's it. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. There's a breakout in this room. There's a breakout in this room. There's a breakout in this room. There's a breakout. There's a breakout. There's a breakout. If you need healing, I want you to begin. Yes. To cry out to the Lord for what you need healing from. Whoa. Jesus. 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 Jesus, our mighty champion. Jesus, our mighty champion. Jesus, our mighty champion. You are our strong 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 champion. In the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. I hear you, Lord. the blood be applied and begin to move against suicidal spirits I don't know where you are I hear it I hear it I hear it suicide contemplating thoughts of dying come on out of there out of there out say to the Lord you are my strong champion. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. You are my strong champion. Suicide, come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. 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 Jesus, 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 
for all sickness and disease we are a part of a new covenant thank you 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 that all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus we don't have to walk to a temple we don't have to we don't have to walk for days and days for a priest to bless us you are the high priest we thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you that you are the high priest thank you 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 that you've never made us have to look to man thank you that we were born in a new covenant thank you 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 that we can boldly come to your throne for everything that we need and there's a promise to obtain mercy if we would humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God there is a promise to obtain mercy there's a time mercy mercy even for the decisions that we made that caused the sickness we cry out for mercy mighty God we cry out for mercy even against the sins of our forefathers we cry out for mercy we cry out for mercy we cry out for mercy let the blood be applied 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 I'm coming let the blood be applied in the name of Jesus there's somebody on your road that needs this intercession right now don't you beg for the word when this prayer is going for come on and pray in the name of Jesus Christ mercy 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 thank you God for the blood in this moment we call on the power of the blood let not our sins consume us let not our wicked hearts consume us let not our divided hearts consume us surely God we have run after other gods but you and your mercy see us and you wash us today we cry out for the washing we cry out for the cleansing we cry out, 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 we boldly enter in and we sit after the promise to obtain mercy. Somebody cry out, somebody cry out, somebody cry out, somebody cry out, somebody cry out. You're not just crying for you, you're crying for the body of Christ. Cry out, you're not just crying for you, we cry for the body of Christ. Cry out, we cry for the body of Christ. Cry out, we cry for the body of Christ. Cry out, we cry for the body of Christ. Cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out. God, we've been an adulterous bride. God, my soul and the attire. Yeah, God. God. My God, am I. Phoebe, I want you to go pray for her. Pray for Cameron. You've been there. Come on, cry out. Come on, come on, come on, come on. A few more moments, a few more moments, a few more moments, a few more moments. Hey, hey, a few more moments. There's glory in the room now. Come on, intercessors. It's not just about you. Wash 
wash our hands wash our feet wash our mouth Lord yes hallelujah Somebody say yes. Somebody cry yes. Wash her, Lord. Wash her, Lord. Wash her. Wash her mind. Wash her. Purify her affections. Yes. 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 Purify her affections. Purify her desires. Purify. My God. My God. My God. Hey! There's some intercessors in the room that feels this burden like I do. That's it. Whoa. We want to be a bride that's faithful, <laughs> committed. desire would be to please you. Thank you, Father. That's it. I'm going to turn to keep crying out. Just this is your church these are your people touch them in the way that you would like to touch them speak to them in the way that you would like to speak to them let this word be curated in such a way that they will not be able to deny when you have touched their hearts Lord let the hearts be pliable just like you. We want to look just like you. We want to look just like you. Joshua is the scripture I want to go to and then I'm going to go to 1 John. Joshua chapter 24. How many of you are feeling good today? Joshua, chapter 24. My father, my father, my father, my father, my father, my father, my father. Thank you for the privilege. First John, I'm sorry, Joshua, and then First John, Joshua, chapter 24. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt here on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nicor. And they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron. And I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterwards I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And you came unto the sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And you dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that you might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you instead. You all remember that story. So I delivered you out of his hand. And you went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. The Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Gagashites. The Hevites and the Jebusites. I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, in cities which you built not. And you dwell in them, of the vineyards and the olive, and the olive yards which you planted not. Do you eat? Now therefore, my God, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day who you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers or your ancestors served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, somebody hear me when I say, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If that's your confession, say we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. You may be seated. Joshua called all the tribes of Israel to Shechem to speak to them before his death. This was his final address. He knew that his time had come. And so he chose this moment to speak to a people who had a history of whoring after other gods. When a bride lays with other men, it's called a 
glory. Jesus. Look at y'all. Looking at me like you're looking all ready. He began by recounting the nation's history to them. We heard that he told him about Abraham who lived in the Far East. He told them about all that God did and, and he, he began to recount the history. But he began to highlight that in spite of the history, in spite of the countless victories, in spite of all that God did, they chose not to be hidden. They chose to associate with gods of other lands, with gods of other countries, saging and worshiping the dead and calling on their ancestors. They chose to do, oh yeah, I'm coming down your street. They chose to do things to substitute the protection and the power of God because they decided that God was not good enough. God is calling his people back to himself. He reminded them of Isaac and Jacob, and he reminded them of the seed that they bore in Joshua. He reminded Joshua, started telling them about the Israelites, about all of the events that took place. He was bringing it back to their remembrance. He told them, remember when God parted the Red Sea? I'm paraphrasing now. Remember when God parted the Red Sea on your behalf? Do you, behalf? Do you remember all of these victories? He's bringing these things back to their remembrance because he's now calling them to the carpet. What he's basically saying is, I'm about to die. This is my last address, and I need you to behave. It is time for us to take account for the other gods that we worshiped. I'm coming. He reminded them of how God had come through and sent plagues against the Israel. Haven't God always been there for you? Hasn't God always showed up for you, Israel? He has always showed up for you. But why do you choose to serve other gods? The place that we stand in today as a church is not new. This has gone on for centuries. But at least they knew that they were serving something false. In the day that we're living in now, People go whoring after other gods and deny that anything is wrong with it. If you talk to most people that are intermingled with other things, strange gods, they'll tell you there's nothing wrong with a little yoga. There's nothing wrong with a little sage. There's nothing wrong with the little Pilates. Yeah, but you're worshiping Eastern gods. They'll tell you that nothing's wrong with it to justify their reasoning. And what God is doing in this hour is he's calling the church to the carpet. He's causing people to bring up situations. I mean, not situations, but he's causing people to bring up topics that were seen to be as taboo in the church. He's causing these conversations to be started by people that are not necessarily your traditional Speakers, traditional meaning tamed, traditional meaning make it suitable for you, traditional meaning say it like I like it, make sure I'm not offended, those type of speak. He's causing people to stand up and to speak out because the pastors aren't preaching about it. The pastors are more concerned with their tithes and their offering and making people feel happy than they are with saving someone's soul. Come on, somebody say it's time to stand up. So God is calling the church to the carpet like Joshua called Israel to the carpet in this moment. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you about the God that you serve. That's what he was basically saying to a people that it closed their heart, that it closed their mind concerning the things that God had done. Let me tell you about him. Let me remind you of him. Let me let you know that you don't need anything else. 
Israel had a history of worshiping other gods. Moses goes up to the mountaintop. He goes up to the mountaintop to seek the Lord. He comes back down from the mountaintop and they have built a golden calf because they could not just worship God alone. They had to have an image before them. They had to have something that they could touch before them because they were not, uh, they were not okay with the God that was invisible that had a better track record than any God that they can ever build with their hands. Something is wrong with the people. That would rather worship Buddha than the God that made the universe. The church is in a critical state. The church is in a critical state. If you notice in Joshua's address, he talks about the forefathers. In some translations, he actually, they actually use the word ancestors because he's talking about them and the things that they did and all of those types of things. And he's bringing that up because he want, really wanted to point out they had history too, but just because they did it, it doesn't mean that you have to do it. There were some things some principles, some um, superstitions, some things that you learn from your grandmother and you think it's Bible. Don't step on the crack, you're going to break your mother's back. You were saying it, but it was really witchcraft. You were saying it, but it was a superstition. That's what superstition is. Don't do that. Don't, if they sweep your feet with the broom, then you got to spin on it. Why? You ain't never heard that. They're just traditions, no. It's witchcraft. Nothing's wrong with it, yeah. It is. Go into the deep south. Go into the places like Memphis and Mississippi, Arkansas, go into any of those places. You will see what it's really about. But what's happening is it's coming on up the coast. And you all are so anxious to grab a hold to something other than God that you are easily strayed away and pulled into it. See how hookah became a thing? Am I upsetting you yet? Do you see how hookah became a thing? Where do you think it came from? Where do you think hookah came from? You think that it just showed up on the scene? But because we don't study, you don't research anything. Your encyclopedia is your best friend that's been coaching you into devilish things for the past three years. You won't break it off though. You won't break it off. That's my friend. I'm going to stick beside her. What's wrong with you? That's my friend. I'm going to stick. You are? Okay. Look at your life. What type of fruit are you bearing? I haven't even gotten to the message yet. What type of fruit are you bearing? Do you talk about God? Or are you talking about the person you slept with last night? What? is wrong with us. The reason why you can't keep a breakthrough is because you keep laying down. Baby, you got to get up. Look around and tell some, baby, you got to get up. Say, you got to get up. You got to come on out of there. You got to, you got to, you got to get up. Come on off the apps. Stop hooking up. The husband that God chooses for you is gonna be in Christ. You don't want to be Belinda the Builder. If I lay with him, maybe I can make him. No! You mad yet? Yes! Pray in the spirit. God says, I'm looking for a bride that I can trust even when she doesn't see me. Hey, I'm looking for a bride. Hey, Lord, I just felt that. 
I'm looking for a bride that I can trust even when she can't feel me. I'm looking for a bride that I can trust even when it feels like I'm not coming through for them. I'm not trying to make it happen on my own. Let's just wait on God. Waiting on God is too difficult. Because somehow you believe that the creator needs help from the thing that was created. God doesn't need your help. I'm talking to every one of you here. If, it, if it's for you, let it land. I pray it land. I pray that you lay down tonight and you don't get sleep until you cut that Negro off. Until you cut that girl off. I pray that the Holy Ghost haunts you in such a way that you won't have peace until you let it go. I said what I said. Oh my God, I didn't come here for this. Yes, you did. God knew your days. He knows your days. And he knew that you were going to be here when he gave me this word. He is talking to you. Here's the thing about the children of Israel, what makes it different from today. The children of Israel, when they went whoring after other gods, sometimes their consequence was death. But for you, you have a God that redeemed you. I mean, you have a God that died for you, so you can boldly go to the throne of grace. But that's the problem. You are taking it for granted. You have mishandled the work of God. Is he always there, ready to forgive you? Yes. But some of you are not truly repenting. Because true repentance will bring change. You've been in the same place too long. You've been in the same place too long. Don't, you've been in the same, why have you been in this place for five years? You have to start asking yourself, it's not just about you being rebaptized. It's about, is, a, is God in me? Oh, Lord. Uh, let me mess with your theology. If, if, is the Holy Ghost in you? Are you really filled or did you pick up somebody else's tongues? And the reason I'm pointing that out is this. is because some of you need to pursue God on a different level. You need a fresh filling, or you need a filling. If your prayer language came as a result of you at the altar with somebody, repeating after them, you might need to be filled. And I'm saying that because I want you to win, not as an insult. Because in the, you know, in the early days, they did what they knew. And for some people it worked, but for some people it didn't. But we need to know, listen, it's between you and God. Yeah. Get back down, baby. You ain't got it yet. No, 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 no. This feeling doesn't need the assistance of any man. Yeah. Can a person pray with you and lay hands and impart and all of that stuff? I'm not, I'm not discrediting that. We've done it. But what I'm saying is this. If you really want to be filled, you don't have to wait until a Sunday morning. You don't have to wait until any moment where another human being is there. If you're hungry enough, the God that you serve wants to fill you and he'll fill you in your bedroom. He will fill you in your car. He will fill you in your workplace. When I got filled, I was five minutes before I was filled, I was delivered from devils. And five minutes after deliver, being delivered from devils, I got filled with the Holy Ghost and I began to pray in a tongue. I didn't even know what tongues were. Nobody even explained to me what tongues were. I was a babe in Christ. The Holy Ghost filled me and tongues began to pour from my spirit. They began to pour from my spirit. I had to find out afterwards what happened to me. 
the woman was preaching about Jesus, and the more she preached about Jesus, the power came in the room. Like you felt, you, did you feel that today? The power came in the room because the power rests in the name of Jesus. She began to preach about the cross. She began to preach about the blood. She began to preach about all of those things, and my heart responded. I wanted this Jesus. I felt so deeply and madly in love with God that all of the gods that were active in my life including who's my husband right now had to take the back seat because it was between me and him there was a power that was working in my life that superseded my love for anyone in anything else and this is when you know you have a real relationship with God you have a real true relationship with God when this conviction hits your life and you can't do anything except align with him it is important that you know that this is obtainable it is important that you hear me testify it is important that you hear people testify about living sold out for God for as for me in this house we will serve the Lord when I'm talking about serving the Lord and preaching about serving the Lord I'm talking about in a pure manner and in I'm talking about serving him in a way that makes people question what happened to you. People should look at you and see a difference in your life and question what happened to her. And you, your life begins to tell a story that your words can never communicate when you truly lay your life down for God. This is how you begin to know the difference between listening or reading a word and the word becoming alive in you. You can hear a word, you can read a word, and it can be a good word, but nothing in your life changes. But when the word comes alive in you, everything about your life begins to line up. I said, you, I told my boyfriend then, I ain't even planning to say this, but I'm, I'm just going to keep going. I said, hey, we, we can't live together no more. Now, I was a teenager that was homeless and came out of, just had tremendous instability, instability throughout my entire life. But when I met God, none of that seemed to matter. I didn't stay shacked up because I needed a place to stay. I said, we can't live together. He said, what? What? Yeah, yeah. I can't do this anymore. He said, what do you mean? I said, this is sin. It was uncommon, un uncommon in his environment. This is, this is sin. This is sin. I said, here's what I said. This breaks God's heart. This breaks God's heart. Where did I learn that? Did I learn it from a sermon? I learned it from the living word. I began to read at a rate, digest the word at a rate, because I was full of the Holy Ghost. And that was this desire that grew daily. Y'all hear me? It grew daily. I just wanted more and more and more and more of the presence of God. But that is rare. In the day that we live in, what happened to the church? The church is living in two worlds. That's what the Lord said. In the kingdom and in the world, they merged. God says, I called them out. But they brought the world with them. He called you to come out from amongst them and be separate. And nothing's wrong with that. Where was I? We have technologically advanced, but we have not biblically advanced. The church is living in two worlds. We have advanced in our understanding, advanced in our language and we know about the mountains and 
We know about making money, but we've not advanced in our seek for him. Which is why God says, hey, I want you to let that go. That relationship go or that thing go until you're ready. You pretend while you're still flirting around with it. Hold it just enough so that nobody else can get them. I'm going to play with this thing just enough because I'm not secure. I'm talking to you, church. You've got to learn how to forsake. When God calls you out of something or away from something, it's because it's dangerous for you. It may not be dangerous right now. I mean, for you in the future, but it's dangerous right now. The church is living in two worlds. So he says in Joshua 24 and 15, he says, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, the gods of the Amorites. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What was Joshua saying? Joshua was telling the people that no matter what you choose, my choice is to follow the Lord. Even if all of them had rejected him on that day, he was making a stand. I will follow him. What a, what a, what a sermon. A sermon to end your life. It's to call people to the carpet and make them choose. But if you choose not to choose God, I'm going to serve him anyway. This is my stance. I will preach to you until I'm taken up out of this place. But as for me, I will serve the Lord. The same message I preach to you, I preach to my children because I'm not an Eli. So, what they do, what they do and what they choose, they get the word of the Lord as well. I'm not going to preach a message to you that I don't preach to my family. Here is the word of the Lord. I will love you through it, but it will grieve me if I go to heaven and one day you don't arrive there. So the message that I preach is not to condemn you. But it's to call you to make a choice. you got to serve the Lord. He was telling them, I have made my choice. But let me remind you of the God that wants to keep you hidden. That wants to keep you covered. Every time Israel got into a situation, they was following something or doing something that they had no business doing. Even their murmuring was grief to God. What have you been saying? Why aren't you satisfied simply with being in Jesus? I just need to advance. I just feel like I'm, I'm stagnant. I need, I need to move. I need to. We, we idolize that. We're, people are not okay with sitting still. So what have you done with the last instructions you got? What, what did you do with it? What have you? The Bible tells us to fan the flame. Have you fanned the flame? The words that you received, have you done anything with that? What, what is God trying to fix in your life? You might need to be still. But if you need to advance, fan the flame. Fan the flame. Fan the flame. Fan the flame. You feel like you're called to nations. Pray for your block. Fan the flame. You're not satisfied with the block because the block doesn't give you prominence. You're not satisfied with the block because the block doesn't make you feel fulfilled because nobody's talking back to you. Nobody's cheering you. Nobody's giving you an honorarium. Nobody's giving you money. They're not paying for your prayers for the block, but your prayers for the block will fan the flame. When was the last time you witnessed how many souls have come to Christ as a result of you communicating about the God that you serve? I'm talking to you. 
fan the flame. You feel, I, it's just time to move on. I, I don't feel it in this church anymore. Is it time to move on? Or have you not done anything with all the words that you receive? Do you quit everything? Do you stop every time you get offended? This is why you're not moving. Are you undependable? Do you show up when you say you're going to show up? Do you think it's just me keeping account of this? Or is there angels assigned that keep records day and night? God Almighty, who am I talking to in here? How much you think it's just me? When I call you out on your inconsistency, do you think I want to pick on you? No, I'm trying to call you to a place of growth. I'm trying to call you to a place of promotion. Do you think it's just me when I tell you you're nasty? You need to repent. You need to forgive your brother. You need to stop doing this. You need, I'm calling you out of the place that you're in. I'm trying to teach you how to fan the flame. This is my life I get to choose. Surely you do. But the problem is, you serve the God of self. You serve the God of self. You're full of yourself. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. Tell somebody, they might get mad with you. Say, hey, are you full of yourself? You're full of yourself. Full of your agenda. Full of your itinerary. Full of your schedule. Full of yourself. Full of your feelings. Full, in, full of yourself. Full of what you think or where you think you should be. You're full of yourself. Self. Some of you need a spiritual enema. You need a cleaning out. You are full of yourself. The Israelites were full of themselves. Here in this scripture, they had crossed over. Joshua had finished his course. They had crossed over. You in the promised land complaining. Jesus. You did all this work to come out of where you were, only to get here and say, I can go back to where I was. That's how some of you are in this church right now. You did all of that to get free, come over here, be liberated and trained, and say, well, they just don't do it like my last pastor. What's wrong with you? You're not in your last church. God brought you out of there to bring you to a new place to give you something new. Is this too much? As for me and my house, we... Hey! Somebody say thank you. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Lift your hands and say, with my whole heart, I want to serve you. I want to serve you with my whole heart. He finishes this history, going through the history of Israel. And Joshua called them to another place of stability, of accountability. He called them to another place of accountability. The Israelites were consistently worshiping other gods. And so Joshua said, before I get up out of here, let me give you a history. Let me remind you of your history or the history of the God that you serve. Whenever you're in a rut, whenever you can find hope from your current situation, you should reflect on history. The fact that you're living is a testimony. Some of you had horrendous childhoods. Some of you came through some difficult situations in your teenage years. Some of you were brought out of some things that none of us would ever be able to comprehend. But God in his mercy brought you out. That is history. That's why you always owe God a praise. That's why you never should sit down on God. Your opportunity to praise him not only celebrates your now. It's not only celebrating what he will do, but it's celebrating what he's already done. You're depressed because you 
are not reflecting on your history with God. You are worshiping the God of self. Y'all don't like that, do you? You, whenever you worship the God of self, it will always lead you to me, myself, and I. Look at me. Me, myself, and I. Your daily reflection is on you. God's. God's. We've got a divorce. Every other God and come into right alignment. The church is in two worlds, is living in two worlds, or have merged two worlds. The church has a divided heart. And God has come today to strike your idols. Many of you are okay until I strike the idol. When I strike the idol, watch how you feel. You clam up, you get upset, Walk away. If you if you're not led to if you're led to any other emotion other than repentance, I have striked your idol. The idols of the heart is what God is after. He's after the idols of your heart. You can identify this type of idol or idolatry by what you are most excessively taken up with. If you spend hours upon hours upon hours studying, studying, studying natural things, but never study your Bible, yeah. that's an idol. Y'all don't like that. You know why? Because you were taught to be driven. But your drivenness supersedes. Whenever your drivenness supersedes your relationship with God, it's a problem for him. It is a problem for him. So I just got to, you know, I got to do what I got to do, you know. I got to do this for six months. What happened after those six months? Look at your life. What happened? I had a daughter that went away to uh, school. I'll just put it that way. And she threw her life. The professors told her, throw church out the window. For the next three years, all you have time to do is study. They said that. Throw it out the window. Your total focus has to be on your studies if you want to succeed. And it provoked a level of just drivenness toward her studies. And what did she do? She, she started out the first few months. And I, I told them that that's, that's a non-negotiable for me. The next three months, she couldn't get God two hours on Sunday. The next three years, she couldn't get God two hours on Sunday. An hour out of 24 hours a day to study and worship. She couldn't give it to him because she was going after something. What was she going after? This was, this was promoting that she was going after her dreams. It's the God of dreams. Write it down. It's the God of dreams. My dreams. My aspirations. I've got to do whatever I got to do to get it. It's excessive. God whispers to you, "Hey, come on and pray. Come on, come on away with me. Come away with me." And your response is, "I'm coming, God. I got to do this first. I got to do that first." It's the God of dreams and aspirations. Whatever is excessive in your life, if you're thought, if you think excessively about marriage it is an idol look at you clamming up I'm talking to you nothing's wrong with wanting to be married I've been praying for the singles my daughter know I made a commitment at the beginning of the year <laughs> but I'm also going to crush you every time I see it 
I'm going to crush it if it's something that I hear you talk about, post about. I know you're thinking about more than you think about God. And that every opportunity that you can, you're in something, he might be the one. He might be the one. Three months gone by. I ain't with him no more, but I can mess somebody else. He, he might be the one. He, I, I'm over here. Now, you know, God's like, oh, yeah, we good now. We good now. Yeah. She praying. He's fasting. He's reading. He's good now. Yeah. That's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. And next thing you know, he's coming in the DM. He's going off in the DM. Or it's, your, or it's your friend that's not really your friend. It's an assignment that comes every time you focus. Talking about girl. Such and said, say he want to talk to you. Man, did you see such and such? You, you coming out of lust and perversion. You just got free from pornography. And all of a sudden, they asking you, did you see such and such? Knowing that your eyes is your weakness. Let me look long enough. And I, listen to me, I know, I know what I'm talking about. I live this thing and I have children. And I've been pastoring for 16 years. <laughs> I appreciate it. I love you. Yeah, so the God of dreams, you got that? Whatever you're captivated by more than anything is an idol. Do you think about what your pastor thinks before you think about what God thinks? Are you more concerned about flesh than you are concerned with the God of the universe? Now I'm going to tell you what many of y'all just went to. Y'all thought, y'all, you go from one extreme to the next. We ain't gonna talk about your, your pastor. You love your pastor too. I'm not talking about that. And nothing wrong with loving your pastors. Nothing wrong with honoring your pastor. But I'm talking about putting it on a scale. You should honor your pastor. You should love your pastor. You should serve your pastor. You should, in spite of what they said to you, those that was hating on your relationship because it was getting a little too close, closer than theirs, that's what I'm talking about. You should love and serve your house and your pastor. But he sh it should never supersede God. I brought that out, but that's the only one y'all always tend to think about. That's why when I said the God of dreams, you said, oh. the world, the world can be an idol. Wanting what people are wanting to live like people live in the world can be an idol. Being covetousness, being, being in covetousness or coveting, that's the God of the world. The God of the world keeps you in bondage. The God of the world is, is an excessive desire for worldly things. Excessive desire for worldly possessions. Excessive desire to be like the world. Excessive desire. Fame is another God. And fame is not just limited to the pulpit. It can be in the arts, entertainment, your career, singing, whatever it is. It could be sports. Whatever it is that you place above God is an idol. 
Our world is an idolatrous system, which is why when you think about sports, now Sundays are not off limits. And see, as, as can I say this? As African-American families, now I have a nephew that's a football star. He's gonna be, he's got his, he just got his six D1 scholarship. Six. So he got choices. By the time he get in 12 years, he have, so I'm not, so what, what I'm saying is, and I've said to him, he can never put that above God. If he puts that above God, it will crush him. It will crush him every single time. So I have been a constant voice because it's been prophesied. We saw it years ago. I have been a constant voice in his life to tell him, hey, you can't do that. But as African-American families or people, that's the first thing that we think. Put our kids in football or some sports and throw everything into it. Forsake God, forsake everything. Just throw everything into it. Because this is our only chance. That's what it is. It's a poverty mindset. This is too much. It's a poverty mindset. This is, what about, what about sending them to school or to, to camp to be a scientist or photography or a teacher or any of those things. If you ask them what's the secondary focus, they have none. I just, I know, I, know, I just, I got five minutes, y'all be done with me. I bet you have none. Why? What happens if a bone breaks? There's an injury. Their life is over. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get him in camp. You know the boy ain't even good. I just, I just, sorry. Just, some of them ain't even good. But you feel like if I do this, it just might work. You looking at him on the field like, the only one cheering. I see that's my baby. Is this too much? Oh, God. I'm telling you, find their niche. Find what they're good at and throw yourself in that. It's poverty. Y'all mad with me? Go leave the church. Oh, God. I was going to say, well, that, that's it. They mad. <laughs> Don't be mad with me. I'm trying to tell you that there are more things. There, there, are, there are gifts and their talents, but because we, we idolize it. You watch the parents when they, are, they see their, their kids are really doing well. You know, they see the, I mean, they see the, uh, the, the football stars and the parents are on there crying. That's my son, I always knew he would do it. You look at that's gonna be me. Maybe it won't be. But do you have another plan? Do you know what your son's gifts are? He might want to do it, but his, his reasoning could be off too. And you have to help cultivate that. Maybe he's an artist. Maybe he's a musician. What are we doing? I'm determined to preach the truth to you all. Another God is the God of the belly. You felt that? Did y'all feel that? I'm striking idols today. I'm striking idols today. I'm striking idols. (laughs) 
doctor said, you need to stop eating that, you know. You need to stop eating that because it's going to kill you. I'm just going to bless it. I'm just going gonna, I'm just gonna to pray over it. Doctor said, yeah, that, that salt is no good for you. Doctor said, stop drinking alcohol. Stop doing this and that. I'm just going, you know, ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of it. You sitting there over that plate, sweating, got, <laughs> getting hardly breathe, dragging your feet, feet swollen, but you still eating. You all right? It was good. <laughs> Some of y'all skinny ones. This ain't about no weight. You can't even fast because you serve your belly. You serve your belly. Doctor say stop eating sugar. You, I'm just gonna take a little. Give me just give me give, give me two of them. Just give me, give me two of them. That's it. No, 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 no. You don't need any. Give me two. I, I, ain't nothing wrong with this a little bit. Just give me that. You, you're sneaking. You, your wife watching you. So you, you eat what you're not supposed to eat while you're at work. It's the God of the belly. You're in idolatry. He said, I repent. You're in idolatry. Who are you hiding from? We know you're off when we go to the doctors. And all your reports are reading off the chart. <laughs> Pastor, he was getting sick, but when, as soon as he, sur he surrendered to what God told him, he lost 31 pounds in six months. Came off red meat and sugar. And haven't had problems since. You gotta crucify your flesh. The devil will make you eat to kill you early. You think he won't? That idol will talk to you. You think it won't? You think it won't? I'm talking to you. That idol will talk to you. I can remember nights laying in my bed and the devil said to me, and it was the devil, I knew it was because God said to me, stop stopping at that store getting that lemon pound cake. Holy Ghost spoke to you. I think he didn't. Spoke to you. I, I was turning in. It become a habit. I did a lemon tasty cake and dill chips. That salt and sugar blend. I'm still preaching. And about two weeks in, I was, I was getting, I had to develop a regimen. And the Holy Spirit, I was turning, Holy Spirit said, yeah, I, I want you to stop that. I'm like, yeah. I want you to stop eating that pound cake and that, those dill chips. And so I listened that day. And the next day I would get there and that idol started talking to me. Well, I can't call it an idol because I did crucify it, but it was, it was becoming that. Yeah. It was the belly. Yeah. However, when I fast, I fast. So mine wasn't really an idol, but I'm talking about, I'm giving you an example. Anyway, I kept, every time I rolled past there, there was a whisper. There was a whisper. Hey, don't forget, it was a reminder. The devil would remind you. It wasn't God, because he told me not to. The devil will remind you. Don't you forget to get your pound cake and your dill chips. You hear me? Don't you forget. And, 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 and I sat down one day. Uh, I found some little uh, a bag of uh, snacks, something I was holding. Now, I can keep snacks a long time. And just that night, I had that, that sugar craving. And I, I said, yeah, I'm going to eat these. You know, these are so good. And I sat, I sat there, and, and I, I, I ate half of a bag. And the Holy Spirit said, are you tired yet? And I said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. No deep conviction. He said, 
the devil wants to kill you. So when I say to you that the devil wants to kill you, I'm not just making things. I'm saying it's a real. He said he wants to shorten your lifespan. And you know how we say everything in moderation? The Holy Spirit said, you don't understand moderation yet. Because you want it too much. He said, you don't understand. So I can't tap, tag that to me. Yeah, I'm just going to do it in moderation. Some people can once they get over the lust of it. You got to get free first. So what did I do from that point forward? I hired a nutritionist. I hired a nutritionist. That was my response to God. Watch this. That was worship. That was worship. Because worship is a lifestyle that's submitted to God. You think worship is just lifting your hands? Do you think worship, I'm out of time, you think worship is just crying out? Worship is how you respond to a command from God. Choose this day who you will serve. Either I'm going to serve God or I'll serve my belly serve the kingdom or I'll serve the world I will serve fame, dreams aspirations or I'll serve the purposes of the king by any means necessary we want to align our lives with God in such a way that everything that we do becomes worship Everything that we do becomes worship. Some of you have idolatry of an easy life. You want to set it up and everything has to be good. Everything has to be right. Everything has to be in a line. It just makes life easier. Trials are ordained by God. But you let trials, I'm closing, y'all tired of me now, because I'm striking. You will let trials turn you away from worshiping God. Because you want to know why is it that you got to suffer. Why? Oh, I know, that's, that's, that's 50% of you. When a trial comes, it knocks you off your it knocks you off your feet you were built to endure you were built you got the Holy Spirit you were built to overcome but if you never go through anything what kind of testimony will you have you want ease you want quietness you want contentment over anything just make sure you're good if, if, it, if, if, if it disturbs you block them if it disturbs you cut them off if it disturbs you sometimes God will send those things in your life to promote you you ain't gonna talk to them you ain't gonna confront nothing you gonna run from them you gonna block them I ain't gonna say nothing what happened girl no 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 some things you got to walk through. Some things you have to walk through. Amen. Y'all had enough? Let every idol fall now in Jesus' name. You know what your idol is. Dreams, aspirations, belly easy life for some of you your idols are your gift for some of you your idols is your ministry for some of you your idols 
It's one you created. For some of you, it's different things, but call it out right now. Call it out. Turn it over. Crucify it. In the name of Jesus, crucify it. Crucify it. Crucify it. Crucify it. For some of you, I've read this, escapism can be an idol. Escapism can be an idol. Call it out in the name of Jesus. It's the wandering of desire. It's the wandering of desire. It's, 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 you, you find yourself always in reading romance novels and stage plays and all of that. You want, you want an illusion. You write, you write or you think or you dream from a place of illusion. Escapism, never with us. Always separated in the name of Jesus. Come on. Call them things out. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this moment and we lay. First, we ask you to forgive us. To forgive us for putting other gods before you. To forgive us for chasing purpose. The God of purpose over chasing you. Father, forgive us for chasing dreams. Come on, you too quiet. Call them out right now, right now, right now. Some of you serve the God of the past. That's one of the gods that the children of Israel served. They wanted it how it was. Come on. They wanted predictability. Some of you serve that. Come on, call it out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whatever it is, this is your moment to call it out. This is your moment. The, to, the God of self is a big one. My opinions, my ways, where I should be by now, all of those things, begin to lay them down now. Pull them down. Pull them from the throne that Jesus is supposed to be sitting on. Pull them from the throne that Jesus is supposed to be sitting on. Father, as we enter into this moment, we cast down every idol in the name of Jesus and we place you back on the throne of our heart we crush every golden calf in our life and we place you back on our on the throne of our heart in Jesus name one of the amazing things about this story keep praying is that when Joshua called them to the carpet after they decided that they would serve God he created a memorial so that they would always remember the promise that he made. God, we thank you that as we give you this in this moment, we ask you, mighty God, for mercy. We ask you, mighty God, hey, somebody cry out, for mercy, for mercy, for mercy, for mercy. Anything that we think about more then we think about pleasing you. Anything that we serve more than we serve you. Anything that we have put on the pedestal above you, we pull it down. We pull it down. We pull it down. Father, we will not be a people that lives in two worlds. But we, and we will not be a people with a divided heart. But we will be a people that serves you fully. In the name of Jesus, your word says in Exodus 20 and 3 that we are to have no other God before you. We thank you, Lord, that your word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. May we be people that stand on the truth, that stand in truth. May we be people that run hard after you. In the name of Jesus, come on and pray. Father, we have put other things before you in a past season, but we decree that you will have our total devotion. You will have our total devotion. Cry out to them, church. In the name of Jesus, whether it be our careers, whether it be school, whether it be money, whatever it is, God, we give it over to you, and we allow you to be Lord, Lord of our life, Lord of our life, 
Lord of our life, supernaturally, would you remove those desires from us? Supernaturally, would you remove those harassing spirits that remind us from us? In the name of Jesus, we apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our conscience. Let our conscience be sealed with truth and not sealed with, seared with anything else. Let the truth of God stand. Father, you are our hope. And we only rely on you in this moment. We can only rely on you. You are our hope. In the name of Jesus, pray, church. Whoa. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to find somebody in the room that you can confess to. That will hold you accountable. Right in this moment, stand to your feet. Find somebody in the room that you can say to them, this is what I laid down. So that they can hold you accountable. Y'all just looking at me. <laughs> yes. If you see me doing this, I give you permission. Don't let any visitor stand by themselves. Everybody find someone. There's people in the back. There is no shame. Today is the day that we turn. Today is the day that we turn. Come on. You are not condemned. You're forgiven. Today is the day that we turn. Y'all, everybody found somebody? If you idolize your own opinion, that's the God of self. Tell somebody. If you've served false religions, false gods, saging, psychics, any of those things, yoga, tell them. This is what community does, remember? Yes. Didn't that feel good? Get that off of you. Yes. If you haven't found someone to talk to, come to the altar, we'll find someone. Come on. There is therefore no condemnation. We are a strong house. Yes. There is therefore no condemnation. promote transparency liberty and freedom yes I see you talking I love it thank you Jesus Be an idol. Oh, we 
we pledge our allegiance to Jesus. Uh, yes, it might be an idol. I just want it. I just want to do it. Why? Because God is not enough. That's what you think. y'all ready to go home the Lord bless you keep you make his face shine oh Lord my God you see how into it I was we didn't even take an all offering don't pay your tithes and offering we can kill that God of love and money come on bring your tithes and offering I'll turn this over and then I'll bless you let me bless you now and then once you give your tithes and offering you're free to be released we don't need a second prayer may the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious unto you and give you peace as he has promised we bless your going we decree that your going shall be better than your coming that your house will be in a better state than it has ever been in in the name of Jesus, we decree that the angels go before you. We decree that there will be no incidents and ex accidents. We decree that nothing spoken against you that is not the will of God shall prosper. We decree that as you leave this place, you will leave this place with a story that the angels cannot say, that they cannot sing, that you have been redeemed from a curse today because you broke relationship with an idol. In the name of Jesus, may the blessings that was on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob be your portion. May you walk in the fullness of the inheritance that God has stored up for you. And as we have made this place or marked this place as a memorial unto the Lord for what he has done, may you find joy and goodness in this house all the days of your life forever and ever. Amen.